and I was going to clean my uh, my brush. As you can see, I've already put the Bob Ross liquid white on the canvas. <clears throat> How is everyone this morning? How are we doing? So I even started a minute early. Normally we're a few minutes late, but this morning, you know, we actually have our crap together, and uh, and you know, we figured we'd go on a minute early, give you guys a little bit extra. And then I forgot my paint thinner bucket, so now we have to wait a little bit. But while we're waiting, I want to say hello to a very special person that's watching. Her name is Kendall. Thank you for watching, Kendall. I appreciate it. And uh, your grandpa is an awesome dude. So besides that, uh, I put Bob Ross liquid white on the canvas. You can see all the little dimples in my in my glove here. Same as the canvas, right? You get, it's not too much. It's not a big gloppy bit of paint. And then there's also not too little, right? And that allows us to kind of blend these oil paints and they'll change color and they'll mix with this white. Thank you, honey. Yeah, I know it's really smelly, but you know, it makes us money. So <laughs> paint thinner now smells like dollars to me because without it, I wouldn't be able to make any dollars. Right? Does that make sense? It didn't make sense. It was really cheesy, babe. It was cheesy. I'm a cheesy guy. All right, so everyone, we've already listed the colors um, in the descriptions. You can paint along with us, and we're going to get started because we get yelled at if we don't start fast enough, right? I wish I remembered that lady's name. She was like, less talking, more painting. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear from me. But uh, yeah, comment, where are you watching from? What time is it where you are? You know, what time zone? Uh, who are you watching with? Are you painting along with us or not? We're going to be painting this picture today. The people on Facebook have already seen it. I'm trying to give you guys a good look at it. It's a, I don't know, if there's a reflection on the screen, hun, from the light? I can't tell. I don't know, I can't get set up because you made me go down the Well, you know, I'm sorry. But yeah, we're gonna be painting this very reflective, almost near perfect reflection of a painting, right? Mountain, sunset. Somebody asked for a sunset last week, so that's what we're going to do. I've got it off to the side over here, and uh, we're just going to get started. There's a, you know, it's pretty much right in the middle of the canvas. So whatever canvas you're painting on, your horizon line is just about right in the middle. And we're going to want to leave a good sized gap of white, some white streaks in the sky, some white streaks in the water. Everything is just, it's got to be perfect for this one. Just paint half the painting and then we'll just snap the canvas in half. Yeah, I'll just like fold it up yeah. and then Yeah. That, that would work, that would work. All right, so we're gonna do Indian yellow. That's <laughs> how you get taught how to do reflections <laughs> when you're in school. Yeah, right, just push it together. Yep. So we're gonna do Indian yellow and we're gonna try to stay on these little shapes, leaving these little kind of open wider areas and you want them to be bigger than you think because when you start blending the paint out then it's really going to uh, grow on us, right? So we're going to do a little bit of Indian yellow, yellow ochre, and uh, bright red together just, just to make like this slighter bit of a darker orangey color, right? And it sort of comes in, there's that there. We may have started a bit too high. Let's do this. Why don't we come over here, we'll make a little bit more. There's like a streak over this way, right? And we're going to blend it out. We're just kind of trying to lay out the shape and the, and the colors of the sky. So then we're going to do a little bit more yellow ochre and bright red just to change to a little bit darker color, right? And it's going to start to blend with this liquid white and change on its own. And we don't want it to all be the same, right? So we're going to leave lighter areas, darker areas. We're leaving this, these white areas. This is where our sun is, okay? So it's like super bright as the sun is going down behind the mountain. Then we need to get into some of our crimson and do some of our crimson and yellow ochre together, right? It just changes the color and makes it a little bit different, right? And that's what the sky is. It's always different and it just, it'll blend together. Okay, so again, we're not done yet, but uh, it's not finished here. We're gonna be blending it out. And again, you wanna leave light areas and a lot of dark areas, okay? Get some more of that Indian yellow up in here, just to blend together. Again, trying to leave these lighter areas. We're going to, to make sense out of all of them. Get a little bit of bright red and uh, yellow ochre, a little bit of crimson, 
come up in here and again it's just changing colors each time we do this and I want this little buffer of crimson in there so when we come in with our our black and dark blue that it's not going to get too crazy it's not going to mix with the yellows and the blues and all that okay we're going up now before I do all that dark color I'm going to come back down and we're going to do our our water all right we're just going to sort of pull over how we think it's going to look it's very white over here let's do a little bit there's a little bit of white over here's a little bit of crimson yellow ochre all right we're going to leave this streak of light in there a little bit darker over here is some of our prussian blue with it a little bit of midnight black come down here in our water and it's very dark down here around the bottom as well you want it to be nice and dark the uh the black and the and the prussian blue will want to mix with that liquid white that's on the canvas so it's got to be very dark a lot of paint in order to get those colors to stay that dark right it's already mixing with the white so you got to continually come back and add in dark for it to work okay we're going to leave it sort of like that let's fill it in there a little bit the water we can mess with later we're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of reflections in this water so i don't want too much paint there did anybody answer our question where they were yeah, watching I'm from? Sorry, or? Roberta Harris says it's one o'clock and she's in Ohio. Allison said UK Ohio. six p.m. Uh, and Suzanne Rye is painting with you. Excellent. Yeah, Suzanne asked me for the colors earlier today. She sent me a message. You guys can always send me a message. Ask what colors we're using. I I thought I had put it in our our event on Facebook and then I went back and I had not put it in. So my bad for everybody and then i did this morning i ran back and i put it in while everybody was you know before we before we really did anything did you already do your shout outs today i did i said hello to kendall oh. hello to all the fans we're going to put a little bit dark thicker paint in the uh in the water just because the colors are more vibrant in the water it seems for some reason in this painting there or in this photo they're uh it's a lot brighter in the water so we're gonna try to match that and we'll see we'll see what it turns out to be right that's what we're all about at happy little landscapes trying something and seeing I can see clearly now right all right I want to come in with my big two inch brush right our house painting brush I want it to be nice and dry I'm going to dab it off on a paper towel. I have two of them, but for some reason I picked up the wet one. And we're going to come into our white and just start to very lightly grab color. Just very lightly, right? It's super bright, so the more color we add, the less white bright it's going to be. And again, there's these streaks of lighter area in the clouds. It's, you can't even really tell if there's clouds in this photo. Like, are they clouds? Is it just color? So we're going to go with and it's going to be a very light, soft sky of just color up here. And try to sort of match those clouds in our color blending, and that way we won't have to add more paint on top, right? And you can see I'm trying to stay as far away from this dark area as possible until I'm ready to blend that dark area. You can see our water sort of reflecting what's underneath. And just by taking and sort of pulling to the side, Right, again, I, I want to try to leave a few light streaky areas in there, just like that, just very lightly back and forth so you can tell there's stuff in there, right? And a lot of it's going to be covered, but we're going to try to catch a couple of these little lighter areas down in here when all of our reflections and trees and everything else is complete. Okay, go up here, try to grab a new brush. I'm not trying to mess all that color up and waste all your guys' time kind of washing brushes, right? All right, now let's go up into this bit, and we're just going to very lightly, because there's so much thick black paint up here, just sort of try to flatten it out a bit like we do with our water. And then I'm going to come in and try to just blend these lines out just a bit so it's not a straight line, just like that. Nice and soft. Blend out our sky. 
try to keep those light areas, right? That's the hardest bit when you start getting dark on your paintbrush, just trying to keep those light areas. Blend our sky on the side and the water. Let's see, I know this is the boring part, guys. I'm sorry. Okay. Now again, I don't think we need to add any clouds. It looks relatively similar to the photo that we have here. It's very bright, we've got this dark streak. I like it, I like it a lot. And just like that, thanks everybody, have a great day. Yeah, and see you later guys, that's it. We only paint backgrounds around here. I'm trying to get all this dark paint off my brush without having to wash it, and it's becoming a pain. So just wash it off, Josh. There we go. Now we got our little dark streak over here. And then we're going to come up with our mountain. We're going to have our sunlight down here. It's going to be nice. It's going to be good. Take a little bit of titanium white, too, just to brighten up this area down here. So we want those lighter areas to sort of match each other, right? We're just kind of trying to make it a little bit wider down here with this titanium white. You really got to blend it in because it's thick. Okay, now we can see it's a little bit lighter over there. It looks really good. I like it. Again, don't worry about the water because we're going to end up filling it with mountains. We're going to flip this painting back over, back and forth, all over the place, and then we're going to swipe over the water. So this could end up being the water. Whichever one looks better, we're going to, you know, whichever one is more crisp, we're going to use that as the top, right? So if you mess up on the first one, don't worry. You, you can turn that into your water. Josh, say hi to Jordan. Say hi to who? Jordan. Jordan, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Anyone else who's new? Is this your first time watching me? Somebody comment. Jordan, Jordan was in our kitchen last night. Yeah, thanks for coming over. All right, we're gonna get these dry, and then we're gonna rock and roll with our mountain, right? Another name that I might butcher, but Andy Cacholi. Cacholi, he's here. He sent me a comment on my new intro video. Has anyone seen the new intro video? Huh? I didn't even know it was posted. Yeah, I posted it, and I've already done the thing with the customization and all that. There's so much work with a YouTube channel, guys. That's why I'm so happy when I get like a tip, like from John, the last couple weeks. You get these tips, and you're like, well, geez, at least you guys sort of appreciate it. You know what I mean? Otherwise, if no one comments and no one interacts, then it just seems like I'm doing this for no one, right? Oh, you posted the video an hour ago. Yeah. All right, we're going to get a little bit of blue, black, and crimson. We're going to make up a mountain, okay? Now, what we're going to want to do, because there's another really dark mountain in front of our, you know, initial big mountain that's in the back, you can see this dark area. Again, I don't know how well you can see it, but right behind the trees is a black bit of mountain, okay? So, in order to keep that nice and dark, we need to make our further away mountain a little bit lighter colored right so we're going to take a little bit of white i'm talking about a little bit compared to your pile because the white will make it go really 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 super gray and then when we put it on here it's going to get even lighter so you just want it to be a little bit lighter on your palette than uh straight black because it's going to get light as we go right so i'm just mixing up this little pile here shouldn't need a whole lot of paint for this little mountain except I almost forgot we're doing the reflection too, right? So this mountain looks sort of like one that I painted just right out of my head the other day. We're gonna come up, we're gonna leave some of these lighter areas, we're gonna leave this lighter area. So why don't we come down from here and we're gonna go like this and it just makes this little bit at the top, maybe comes down a bit, got like another hump. And again, it's not gonna be really pointy it's a very round mountain, right? At that bit, there's like a little drop off, so it comes down. And there's a couple little bits and bumps and all the way, all the way down. And just like this. So it goes off. Again, we're just trying to make the top line crisp. And that way we can take it and blend all the rest of the stuff down, right? Grabbing up some of this paint around the edges. Looks like we need another little drop off right here. It's gotta look correct, right? There's like a little dip, not too much of a dip though, but a sizable dip. There we go. That looks very close to what the mountain looks like in the photo. 
now we just kind of shade the sucker, right? So I'm going to scrape up all this paint. Whatever moves anywhere, that's fine. Right? You want it to be different. You want to have lighter areas and darker areas inside of it, and then we can take it and blend it. But you don't want any big, thick ridges of paint because our mountain's going to grow too much. Okay? There we go. So scrape it all up. Uh-oh. Go it's time, break. time to go on my first break at work. It's a cheap-ass watch. All right. So if we, you can, if you felt comfortable, do it upside down or we could flip it upside down and do it but again you don't want to have a lot of paint it's got to be very you don't want it to move from what it is right because we don't have a lot of room so why don't we do this why don't we just do this come on now sticky old sucker For those wondering, you can buy this at Z on. Uh, you can buy this easel on Amazon.com forward slash forward, forward slot slot forward slash shop forward slash Happy Landscape. You could, if you wanted to buy my this easel that I use. I like it. It's it's you know it's good for what I need it for. It's very robust, sure. and it takes about nine hours to put together. <laughs> it took us a little while to put together. That's true. <laughs> okay, so. Now we're doing it in reverse, right? So you got to follow what you did over here. We had like a couple little steps coming up. All right, had our big round bit of our mountain, came down, a little bit of a another peak, right? And then we're coming off this way, okay? Is that like relatively uh, the same, hun? I need your eyes. Yeah. Is that a good reflection? Yeah, I think you should make the point bit just a little sharper. There. What? Perfect. Oh, like that? Yeah. Oh, this one has a little step off that we forgot. There we go. Comes down. I like it. It's close enough. It'll be covered on the sides anyway. We're really only worried about what the top line looks like. Everything else, remember, we're going to come in, we're going to scrape all this stuff away because we don't want a whole ton there. And try to leave a little bit of light area in between. That is our it goal. It looks like a crocodile. <laughs> it does sort of look like a crocodile. <laughs> all right, again, I just want to very lightly grab this. I don't even really want to move it at all, right? And I want to leave this lighter area in between. Our whole bit of land is going to have to sit in there. <laughs> Crocodile Mountains with Josh Kirkham. Yeah, right. Pull this one off this way. All right. Switch the sucker back around. You guys wonder why I wear gloves, right? This is why. By the way, it is 7 p.m. in the Netherlands. Nice. Never had a Netherlandian watch. It's like an Atlantean. It's good at Copagans. No, oh, okay. Netherlands. All right. Bing, bang, boom. And we'll just pull it off. And now we have this near mirror reflection, right? Try to keep some of that light in there. I just, I'm really hoping that we can keep some of that light in there. That is the hope. It's a fool's hope, but it's a hope. And I'm trying to get any big thick line of paint to come off of here because when we go to swipe it with our reflection, you don't want to have too much. It'll just go crazy, right? All right, I really want to make this nice and foggy. All right, just real foggy. I'm okay, gonna come I'm, in. I'm excited for Christmas when you paint the advent calendars on film. Yeah, those advent calendars are fun. Okay, a little bit of white paint. We've got a big kind of, that area is really not covered at all. We're gonna come down like that. You don't need to go too far. Remember, this is a, it's a little short bit of mountain. But this mountain is very, the snow is like very thick on it. So there's not a lot of breaking. So I'm gonna go slow versus fast, right? And that allows, that won't allow your paint to really break, really. Come down this way. A little bit up there, a little bit underneath. 
And there's all these little shadows and crazy little areas, so don't have to do the the whole thing in snow. Right. I'm gonna put a little bit of snow on here just to make it a little bit lighter colored, a little bit of that white. There we go. Just pull it down. That's literally what it looks like. Literally. All right, now I'm gonna take all this white, and again, we have to come in with another bit of mountain back there. There we go. Just kind of fog it up, fluff it up. Now we'll have room to throw our next bit of mountain, which we're not going to mix, you know, make any lighter. We're just gonna have that dark color between these three colors, the blue, black, and white. And then it's gonna come in from across our whole thing, and it's this very jagged bit of mountain that's very dark at the top, okay? So kind of save all that paint for the top of the, the ridge because we're gonna try to make the rest of it very kind of gray. All right, this is why we don't have to come down too far with the, with the snow up there. If it ever becomes too hard to get your dark to stick over that white, just scrape that white away. There we go. And there was like a strange bit of mountain that lived up here. It's like this weird looking spire. It's also connected to this guy. It looks like a spaceship that's coming to attack us. Yeah, I, it's very much a... Right now. Once you have a separation between the ground and the water, it's going to look totally different. But right now it looks like a flying, like, mothership rock that's going to come and take us all away. Well, that's awesome. Okay, we're going to do ours upside down this time, which may take longer, but, or it could be quicker, depending on how you rock and roll. Again, I want to pull this bit down, but it's got to be, you got to have like zero paint, except for at the very top of the ridge. So be very rough with it. Scrape all that paint away because it's going to get very light. You can even use it to make the um, next bit of reflections on your, on your mountain. All right, before we do that, we got to throw some snow on this guy. And what's funny is the... Whichever side looks better on the top is the side we're going to keep. So you don't have to, don't have to worry. All right, we that side was there, so we had a little bit of snow in here. Came down, very thick. Josh, bits of snow. Yeah. You have some people painting with you today. Yeah. And you're uh, you're going a little fast. Am I going too fast for you guys? That is the best part about these videos, is you can always go back and uh, and check them out again, you know what I mean? If we do end up going too fast. Let's see, just like that. We'll go a little slower for you guys, I don't mind. I'm here. Here. There we go. Okay. Does that look relatively similar? Well, no, because in my mind it looks like a mother rock coming to take us away. Yeah. So you're trying to paint a mountain, and all I can think of is aliens. Ooh, we can just fog up. Ooh, that's going to look nice, guys. Okay. See? We're just, uh, when you're painting a picture, it's, uh, a learning process for the entire thing, you know what I mean? It's not an easy bit to do. And then sometimes you see and you go, oh well that's why that didn't work and maybe I should do this to try to get this effect or whatever. Well, come up over here, just a perfect amount of paint, look at that. Okay, again, scrape it all except for the very top line, right? Scrape this whole sucker, because it's going to try to grow on us. And again, we're trying to keep this area sort of lighter colored 
than this, right? Because now we're going to come back in with dark trees. It's a very, very <laughs> light, dark, light, dark, light, dark in this painting. What's up? John Krasniak says, we need long lives like last week. And then he said, just joking. But I think, in all honesty, those, the long lives where you take, you know, a ton of time. Yeah, last week but, we painted for like almost three hours. Yeah, but if, if people want to slow in-depth video do you offer anything like that? such a businesswoman babe <laughs> so yes i have on my channel and we've got memberships right where we take these live videos and i edit them during the week and then we put them out for the members only that you can you know it's it's just like our normal weekly videos where we zoom in we get real close we show you how to do it versus being you know as far back as you guys are right now but uh, yeah, that's that's for the level two members and up. So we have a few level two members probably watching right now. One of your level twos is painting with you right now. Well, there we go. And uh, she said she will not wait for the slow down video. You must slow down during your live today. <laughs> I must slow down now. She didn't say that. But. What? Uh, how far along is Suzanne? I think it's Suzanne that's painting with us, right? It is Suzanne. Okay. Everyone else is just here to see my pretty face. I tried to convince London to come on camera this week, guys. So it's up to her if she wants to to come on. But I tried my hardest, you know. <clears throat> come up here and take the brush away from Suzanne me, baby. Suzanne Rice says she's about to snow you the mountains. Oh, okay. Way well, you're, fast. you're a little bit behind, them, but that's okay. It's okay. Put that, if, put them snow on them mountains. What if Suzanne wanted to watch this video later? Can she do that? Well, yeah, the videos are always available. Always. It'll be on YouTube, you can go back and watch. It'll be on my Facebook page. I'll put it in the Bob Ross Oil Painting for Beginners group and all the other groups that I'm in. Let's see, but we'll go a little slower. What do you guys want to talk about today? <laughs> John Krasniak says, you do have all your microphones on today, right? Yeah, I do. We made sure of that. <laughs> It's funny though. All right. I'm Why don't you ask people what level of consciousness they think they're in if you try and roll over while you're asleep? Oh, I don't know if we need to get into all of that. You said you were going to talk about it today. Yeah, but now we got other stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you can see, is my sky? Which one's my sky? I can't even remember which one I liked better. But it's a pretty much weird, a mirror reflection, right? Is it not? Do I need to fix the bottom one? You guys gotta tell me if it isn't. It's not, and no one told me. It's not, but if you put the land no. a little higher, it would be fine. It's not, and no one told me. That's the, okay. that's the thing. It's not, babe. Okay, but we can fix it, so that's fine. Fix it, take our knife, we'll go, which one had the paint on it? This side. And just make it a little bit taller. Why don't you flip it back on the because I am a consummate professional, and I can fix it this way. You just made that up, didn't you? I did. Our top needs to be higher over here. And this will give Suzanne a chance to catch up. Still not high enough. No, that's much better, babe. Your reflection's gonna be a little distorted in the reflection anyway. Yeah, in the water it'll be distorted, but it's gotta look Similar. All right, is that more perspectively? You've got the thing, maybe there's a little hump out here, right? Just like that, it comes up, comes down, comes around. Right? Yes. Saw Bandits is watching from Ireland. Ireland? Yeah. Noise. Well, thank you for watching. And thank you for commenting. <laughs> Roberta Harris says London has a pretty face, too. London is gorgeous. <laughs> you guys only wish you could see London. Oh, you're awful. Okay. That's pretty close. Right? Except we need the this line down the side. 
Yeah, so hopefully Suzanne had hers right on the first go. Suzanne, how are you doing? See, now we're at the same point again, Suzanne. Forget that it's going to take time away from her painting for her to comment. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll do that. She's like, I've got four brushes in my hands. Yep. Dr. Ogden. So shut you. up. I can't concentrate with you. <laughs> you guys chit-chatting. There we go. just want to have that straight peak. Now it looks a lot better. It's a lot more even. She said almost that. Okay. A lot more even now. Again, I want to take any of these big, thick areas of paint, like the, you know, the mountain. We're going to try to be very thin, very gentle with these big, thick lines. I'm going to get rid of them, pull them down. So I'm just using a filbert brush right now, just so I can grab this very small area, and pull it down. I like that the mountains in the back are literally black, like the way that the light is shining on everything, they just look dark and then they have this light bit of fog at the bottom, so we're leaving that in between both. And then we can come back in with our trees, a couple of them will be taller than the mountains, and then the ones on the side are going to be very tall and very tall down here. So yeah, I think, uh, you know, we have to, we have to save bit of grass. There's a whole bunch of uh, stuff. Maybe I'm thinking maybe we don't have enough room. No, you do. No, I don't think we do. No, you do. Babe, please. I don't think we do. I really don't. Which means I'm going to scrape off my thing. We're just going to make it a little bit bigger. That'll give us more room in the middle. Okay? I really want to scrape off all that thick paint, though. A little bit of dark. I'm just going to make up that same sort of color of our uh, initial mountain, right? A little bit of white. There we go. It needs to be bigger, is my thinking, my thought. And right, that'll give us room to work with. Which also means everything else needs to be bigger as well. Uh, we're going to take this guy, I'm going to pull him down. Again, just worry about what the top side looks like. There we go. And it doesn't have to be super dark for the mountain color, you know what I mean? You want it to almost be really light. And this is just our reflection our reflective side anyway. There we go. Okay, that's better. That'll give me more room to work with. Come back in. Do our bit a little bit higher. Our mountain chain, right? We'll leave it over there. This guy's going to come up down around here. Bingo, bango. See, and this is the fun part, guys, when you can take, you know, and when I, when I show you when we make a mistake, right, or what we do to fix whatever is going on, I hope you guys like that anyway, that I'm not, that I'm not perfect, I'm not a robot. So I hope you guys appreciate that I can show you how when you make a mistake, you don't have to throw your painting away. You can literally fix it and uh, and love it. All right, we're going to do this. It's a pain in my butt to do it upside down. So let's do it this way. There we go. That's that side. It's got the thing, so we'll come down, down. And again, we're going slow on this one because I want it to be very thick. And I don't want the paint to really break a lot. All right, we're going to have these areas. This side is very bare, just like that side is. We need to get the line to look a little bit better. There we go. You can always.
always mess with it. Okay. Keep it over here. Now we'll come back in with that mountain bit. It's going to come up like this. It's very dark at the top. There we go. Now we've got a fair enough amount of room that we can do everything that we want to do. Just going to drag those guys down a little bit. Again, they're not very distinct. There's not a lot of detail on them. So we're just going to leave them a little bit dark. And you just want them to be dark at the top, kind of faded in the middle. You can see the, the two lines, right? Am I the only one that can see the lines? We can see the lines. OK, good. Uh, John Krasniak says it's not a mistake. It's a Josh mishap. Yeah, right. It's a happy little Josh at it. Okay. Just going to try to really just flatten this, sort of blend it out. We really, we really only want the top lines dark, as you guys can see, right? Everything else is sort of foggy in the middle. Let's clean these brushes real quick. And that's the thing about doing a, trying to do a photo, you know what I mean? It's Normally we could have let it fly if we were doing something, you know, just on our own and it could have turned into something different and not look like the picture at all and it could have been awesome. But when we're trying to do a photo, you really have to try to make it look like the picture, right? That's the point. Especially if somebody is, is you know, has commissioned you to do the painting and you're like, I've never painted a photo before. Well, come back and reference this video about how we start with the skies and the waters and then, then you know the different levels of depth that we put in there, right? Alright, so now in between, let's get our thing back right the way up so we don't forget which one is our is our reflection, right? Let's see. Yep. Nice and tight in there again. A little bit of dark on my finger up here. Get the bone out of that. There we go. Always got to make sure your <clears throat> brushes are very dry, right? Got to have them dry, otherwise, if there's paint thinner on them, it'll take that paint away from the canvas. It may not be you, your intended effect. Okay. Now, I'm going to imagine that our horizon line is about halfway up the sucker, right? Just like that, roughly. Just a little line for myself. We're going to throw trees off the top and down the bottom. And then we're going to have our grass, different stuff, and then our water is going to sit right in there. So, we're going to have our grassy reflections. Our, our, our horizon line may need to be about just put in a little line just like that you guys see that or is that just for me we you see can it. sort of see it that's where the that's where I'm imagining our water is going to be so everything above that in our photo needs to start high enough to where we can add trees then grass and pull out down to the water right so sort of a guide I guess a little guide for myself there we go all right, in this, in this case, since the painting is, the, the canvas we're doing is small and the trees are sort of far off and, and in the distance anyway, I'm gonna use our micro fan brushes. Uh, you can find these, they're the, what are they called? Meaden, right? They're the Meaden ones, I think. No, they're Nick Pro. Nick Pro micro fan brushes, right? If you don't wanna go search for and hope that you got the right one, you can find them on my Amazon shop, uh, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. They're right there, you can click them. I know a few of the people have, have got them. They really just give you these cool little details that it's tough to get with a normal size fan brush, a bigger one, right? All right, so we're gonna make up our, our tree color. Again, crimson, black, and blue. You can even put a little bit of sap green with it. Not too much though, because we're gonna highlight them a little in sap green. So a lot of them are very silhouetted, these trees. They've done a lot of color. All of our color in this painting is in the sky and the water, right? And then the trees are very much, since the sun is back here setting, 
it's can you know the, the way that the lighting is it's very everything is very dark just kind of almost just a silhouette all right so we can put our big trees in and they literally go to the top of the canvas and to the bottom we can do this side first let's do let's do this I like starting in the middle for some reason and then I kind of know how many I can do and how far I can go to the side right so let's start in the middle plus this one that's in the middle has just, just just perfect amount of character to it so that's where I want to start it's about right here because I want to save that little bit of character in this tree All right and he comes down maybe to about there now if I want if since my painting is very thick I'm gonna get a little bit of paint thinner not a lot okay just the just like the end of the paint end of the end of the bristles into the paint and we're gonna come back and it's just gonna thin our paint down just a little so it can go over this little thick bit of uh, snow top, right? There we go. Just like that, we've created this far off bit of tree. And then what's cool, we don't even need to flip it over. We can literally, instead of pushing up, now our hand is down here and we're pushing down, right? So we can go and we can push down maybe his, if that's our grass. So he starts like this, and then as we go, we just touch less, and then I rotate it so the thing is almost vertical, and it's not too thick, and then you have your reflection of the tree down into the water, right? And remember, on the top of this thick white snow, it starts getting rough, okay? So be gentle. Don't try to force it in. And I forgot, we need to leave a little area of our... Uh, for our grass reflections in there. And there we go. That's it, guys. That's the painting. We'll see you later. All right, we're gonna come in, and these guys are shorter. They almost don't even reach the tip top of this um, little black mountain chain back there in the back, right? This is why we're using just a very small little fan brush. It just makes it so much easier. I mean, if your canvas is, is a bigger one than mine, I didn't have many to choose from today. So we had to go with this size one. But if you're painting on a bigger one, you could be using a bigger brush if you've got the room. Let's see. We go over here, bing, bing, boom. Just literally making a mess, making all these little trees. They're just about underneath, you know, that dark area. So there's this fog behind it. You can tell there's distance in between the two bits. Let's just turn this turn out pretty good. Right, we'll come down here and make our another little tree guy. Another little guy over here, another little guy over here, All right? And just making these messy reflections down into our water. They don't have to be 100% perfect because we're going to swipe across, hopefully with just enough pressure to not ruin it too bad. And, uh, you know, we're literally going to be like, like blowing on it with the brush, like just barely, just to get the smallest bit of distortion down around the bottom, right? All right, we'll come back in. I want a little bit of paint thinner, just the tiniest bit, because we don't have a lot of room. And we're not gonna be putting highlights on these trees anyway, so they can be a little bit thinner and uh, still stand out over there. Right, there's this one weird little like shape down here. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a man-made thing, something, like a bit of piping or some kind of something, but it's there, I can seize it. There's a little bit of gap. There's a whole other tree in here. And the trees are going to get a little bit bigger now. Let's see, maybe one pokes up out the top. And you can see I have space in between the trees, right, with that fog, so you can tell there's something off there. There's maybe there, at the, this is at the top of the hill, and then it goes down, and then it comes back up for that big mountain that's in the back, right? You never know what's. Uh, What's over there? All right, I think we're gonna skip these last two and we'll come up here and do, <laughs> do this funky tree. Hang on, I'm try to get a straight line out of this guy. Right down like that. And now this one is only really, got bristles on like one side of it. So we're gonna start at the top, make them real small, right? Real small, and then we get about like three quarters of the way down, and then it really only starts growing on the one side. So, 
to start throwing them off like this. Just like that. So they're only really on the one side of the, of the tree. Which is funny, because nature is never perfect, you know what I mean? It's never going to be perfect. A little bit of a line right down the very edge. And that's why I like landscape painting, because it doesn't have to look, you know, like someone's face. It just doesn't have to be exactly perfect, right? We can sort of do what we want to do. As long as it sort of looks like a tree, then everyone's happy, right? There we go. We got these two giant trees right along the side, one taller than the other. You can't even really see the top of the of that one just because it's so giant. Okay, well, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna do like one more little tree on this guy because he needs a friend. Come on this side. And again, these are just very far off, just sort of silhouettes of trees, right? Now over here, we've got a couple taller ones. Let's see, one comes about there. About right there, I already put the dot, Josh, so you gotta do it now. Down about where the rest of our bottom of our trees are, right? And then we've got another one smaller off to the side, and he's over here. And there's one like medium sized one, I guess, right here. And there we go. Now we're gonna start very small up at the top, just a corner. You can see how my hand is turned to the side. It's not straight on, like with all the bristles of the brush. It's turned to the side, so we're only using the very tip top corner. And we're just gonna touch very lightly, just with the corner. Okay, now the further that we go down, the more bristles we can use of our brush, right? So now I'm using all the bristles and then I'm starting to kind of pendulum sway back and forth. And I don't want to cut that whole tree. I'm going to cover him all. And just like that, I'll come back and grab a little bit more. This guy just has a few little details on him. It's not a whole lot of detail on that guy. But you want to be able to tell that it's there, right? He's there, he's in with this other giant guy. And then we've got this one over here. And you really want to block out all the light behind these trees. All right, just very dark and thick and really block out the light back there. I like doing mine on the side for the buyer. Right, anyone who's bought one should have seen at least some sort of something on the side of it. A tree, a bit of grass, the side of the mountain, something. I always try to finish my sides and I think you guys should too because if somebody ever wants to buy your painting and it just looks unfinished and messy on the sides, then they're not gonna want it, you know what I mean? No one's gonna want that. Okay, we're gonna start over here again, just sort of twist, bam, 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 bam. A little bit of a tree, much smaller little guy in here. Got the reflection of that weird thing. I don't know if it's a piece of piping or whatever it is. If someone's looking at the, the actual photo, can you tell me what it is? Because I have no idea. All right, we got that. Now we got our bigger tree who comes down to about, let's see. Yeah, about there. All right, so we'll take, we'll go like this. Make it up this way. Okay, now, <laughs> be careful because we did this side of the tree, which means we need to do this side of the tree, right? You don't want to have your, your reflections opposite, okay? And in order to do that, because this one is just such a very specific shape, I'm gonna flip it upside down so I can do it. If you guys want to do it, you know, the other way, totally up to you. But I think just to match the shape here, we have to be very, uh, you know, take a lot of, it's on this side, so like this, a couple little details. And then we're gonna start coming, and then a lot of them are just on this one side. That's pretty similar. Not too shabby, Josh, not too shabby. Okay, this one came off the top. So we'll go down about there. And again, this lighter area in between, that's where we're gonna be putting our grass, okay? So try not to cover that. 
these coming in. They almost kiss each other, they're so close. It's been growing up together. I finished the edges for the buyer, give a couple little leaf details out here on the side. When, if ever, it sells, right? If it ever wants to go. What really makes this bit cool is when you do, when it wraps around the corner, right? Because you might see it hanging on your wall, and then as you walk by, it makes you want to look around to see what's happening. It's a really cool little effect. Okay, now this side, we have our taller tree. It was a little bit taller than that guy, so he's there. Right. Maybe over a little bit, but we can move him. And then the other one's like here. Again, we want to be very small. This is like a very gradual tree. There's no really limbs that stick out away from it. It's very thick and very uniform all the way down to the bottom, right? Same with this one, he's a little shorter though. And again, very thick, can't really see through the branches. Not a lot of real big branches that kind of stick out and say hello anyway, right? Man, that looks good. Look, the look -a good. There's like one little tree off the distance here. It just sort of fills in that area. Alright, so we'll put him here as well, just above the mountain, bam. Again, the, they don't have to be 100% perfect because you can swip, you know, swish them. You can make them really messy down around the bottom if they don't look exactly like you want them to. So don't worry. No one said anything, babe. You haven't said anything. Nobody's talking to me. No Troy one's Bell talking. says, there is the man, the legend, the master, I hope all is well. <laughs> thank you, Bobby thank Scott you. Bobby Scott says hello. Bobby nobody, Scott. Nobody else wants to talk to me. Oh. Well, you know, guys, we are here to, you know, interact. I want to hear about your favorite song or your day. What do you guys got planned you're doing after this? Does anyone remember which side was the top and which was the reflection? Because I can't tell now. Nope. Oh, that's hilarious. What's everyone doing, you know? Uh, what are you guys going to have for dinner, lunch, whatever? All right, let's see. We're going to take this sucker again. Oh, that's the right way around. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Again, in the photo, the colors are, were very dark in the water. Like, they were darker than uh, the Suzanne ones in the Rye thing. says, I was trying to keep up. I've stopped now. Tell Josh I finished the stupid goats. Oh, the stupid goats. She sent me a picture. They were cool goats. They weren't stupid. All right, let's get a bit of... Well, that's a nasty chunk of... Thing. I got brand new paints, guys. Isn't that fun? Always fun to get a brand new set. Here we go. I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, Van Dyke, uh, sorry, Dark Sienna. I always call it Van Dyke Brown because it's brown and I just want to say brown. A little bit of this brown. We're going to start way back there. We're going to make this little like path that leads down to our waterline just by shaking the knife back and forth right doesn't need to be super noticeable or anything like that just needs to come down a little bit I mean it's a, a little walkway down to the water or something you know what I mean again it doesn't need to be really bright in this photo either so don't make it too bright I added a little bit of white with the with the dark sienna just to sort of brighten it up enough where I could see it. There we go. I've got this glare I have to deal with that you guys don't know about. Okay, we'll flip it over and do that. We've got a little bit of like sort of a shelf underneath our grass. So why don't we put that in now? Just by taking a little bit, scooping it up, and just touching whatever sticks is gonna stick. It's a very straight shoreline, so don't go too crazy. Uh, and it's not as, as thick over there. So, put a little bit underneath of our, our walkway. And bam. You can even do it like this and just make it a little bit longer. And then we'll cut our water line right in between those two. There we go. And then we'll take a 
take our water and just right in between there. It's going to look awesome. All right, now we have to get a real small little brush. Really want to just try to make the bottoms of these trees soft. Right? Peter Braseno says, hello, I finally get to watch you live, enjoying it. Hey, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining with us today. Troy Bell says, just watching you paint, then go and tweet brisket and finish my second painting. Oh, nice. Troy Bell's painting now? That's awesome. I hope I inspired that. I'm going to take credit for it anyway. <laughs> All right, I'm just dabbing at the base of my trees in my reflections, right? Kind of swiping up, and then over here we're going to swipe down. Just like that. I don't want a lot of paint there because I'm going to come over with green hills and stuff like that, right? So let's clean off this brush. And we've got some crazy light sources over here. So I'm going to come into my, let's just do our yellow ochre, a little bit of uh, sap green together on our brush, and then we're going to come and tap in like some shadow, right? And then we'll come back with our liquid white and uh, really get our, our highlights to stick on there, right? I'm just taking the brush right through the green, kind of wiggling it down, just so I have this sort of knife-like edge. And then we're going to come back in and put in our little bits of grass in here. And again, they need to be a little bit dark until we get to about right here. Okay, so we're going to come down. Got our reflections of our grass here. Again, leaving this area alone because it needs to be much brighter there. So I don't want it to have too much paint on it already, otherwise it won't become very bright. And we can always brighten it up with liquid white and a different color. You can take yours and put, you know, little flowers or different things. But in this case for mine, like I said, we're trying to recreate this photo. So, man, that's a lot of white paint right here. There we go. I don't need my reflections to be so thick because we're going to swipe over them, right? Troy Bell says, you did. You looked at my first one and said I was using too much paint and that is why it was muddled a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. Excellent. Glad I could help. Let's see. Okay, we're going to come in again. We've got a little bit of liquid white this time, maybe a little bit more. There are little dots of white in the actual painting, like little flowers. So we're gonna go liquid white and our our uh, yellow ochre, right? Then we're gonna come in and it should be much brighter. There we go, oh, we got a little bit of red in there too. Be much brighter though than the other section, right? You can, guys can see. And then there's a little bit of light on these bits over here. And that's really it. It's like the last little bit of light that was there as the, uh, sun was going down, right? So again, we want to try to stay light. So come back in a little bit more liquid white, a little bit of that yellow ochre again, and just sort of match the color reflection underneath, right? That's all we're really trying to do. And that's literally it, guys. There's not a whole lot left of this painting. You can add little bits of color in places that we want. You've currently been live for 59 minutes. Oh, good. Nice little hour-long painting. All right, now comes the reflective bit, guys. So again, we've been talking about this. I've got a dry two inch brush here. Haven't used it for a while anyway. Okay, we're gonna take our, uh, gonna take right around the middle of that black line and just so lightly, like you don't even wanna really even touch it. You just want it to be a little bit less you know, clear than our top line, right? And then we're just gonna very, very, very lightly with like three hairs. Like when Bob used to say, oh, three hairs in some air. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Like the lightest you could possibly touch anything. Like, like you know, think of it like there's a baby, right? You gotta touch it. Just so light, oh my God, not too much. 
right? Come across, just, I mean, not even moving our mountains, really. Just swiping enough to make it, you know, just so, so, so very lightly disturbed, just like that. Even, I mean, too much can be too much, you know what I mean? You want to, you want it to look almost exact, but you just want to have these little swipe lines, and that's what's going to make it look like we are now on the water side, right? We're gonna take our water line right in between the two blacks and cut it as straight as you can get it. Just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect all the way across. All right, they don't have to touch. Damn. Just like that, guys, that's it. Again, it, the water line does not even have to match perfectly all the way across. It doesn't have to be the same thickness. It doesn't have to do anything like that. And that turned out really good. I gotta step back and look at this one. Compared to the photo, I mean, come on, guys. Come on now. It looks amazing. It does. I mean, look at that. Can you guys see that? Side by side, maybe? I can't see if there's glare on it, but. Hold on, I'll tell you in two seconds. Yeah, in I'm ten seconds when perfect. the <laughs> when the timing goes away. Looks pretty good. It's perfect. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. So let's throw our little uh, birds in there, our family, right? Before someone says, you forgot the birds. <laughs> Suzanne says, wow. Thank Roberta you. Harris says, looking great. Thank you. I obviously tell you it looks good. I say yeah. that every time. Lennon says it looks good all the time. Alright, get our yardstick. If you guys don't have a yardstick, you should probably get one. It just allows you to rest your hand to make these real small details. And uh, I love it. John Krasnia says, great, great job. The pool Graceno says, looks great. Thank you. For our little guys in there. Uh, for this one, i got to cover every single side, including the bottom, too. And we have to paint our birds in the opposite direction, which is going to be fun. <laughs> this could be a disaster. All right. How am I supposed to paint with a giant glob of paint on my brush? How did you get that giant?